Yes. Uh, Zakir Bhai, I have a very simple question. Uh, Professor Devray, I have not studied any religion. I don't believe in any religion. I have, my simple question is, do you believe that there are different religions and there have to be different religions? Because in your lecture you said that the Allah, the God Almighty, created all the people in the world, men and women, and He purposely divided them into different religions, different regions, etc., etc., so that they should not fight with each other, but they should understand each other. Will you kindly explain to me the purpose of the Crusades? And will you kind of, kindly explain to me your own statement that the difference between Hinduism and the Islam religion, you said that it is Hinduism and it is Islam religion. You never said that Hinduism is a religion. The difference which you stated between Hinduism and Islam religion was that Hindus believe that everything is God, while Muslims believe that everything is God's. If everything is God's, why there is so much of killing, either in India or in any other part of the whole world, even in the Muslim countries also? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. And he said that, I said in my talk, that the Almighty God has created the human being from a single pair, male and female, and I've divided into different religions. Brother, never did I say the Almighty God divided the people into different religions. It didn't be recorded. I never said different religions. I said you know, different nations and tribes. Races in colors, not religion. Allah says there's only one religion. Almighty God never divided the people into different religions. There's only one religion. In the different nations and colors and variation in languages so that you may recognize each other. So that you may know, okay, this person, he comes from this particular race, from this region. Not religion, region. It is not religion. So your statement of religion is not, other things is fine. Different languages, different colors, different nations, I agree with that. So that they may recognize each other, not that they shall fight amongst each other. You said that, I never mentioned that Hinduism is a religion. I again disagree with you. I said religion is a belief in Almighty God, or an Oxford Dictionary. To understand Hinduism, to understand the religion of Hinduism, you have to understand the concept of God. To understand the religion of Judaism, you have to understand the concept of God in Judaism. To understand the religion of Christianity, you have to understand the concept of God in Christianity. To understand the religion of Islam, you have to understand the concept of God in Islam. That's what I said. Regarding differences, who has created? Not Almighty God. Allah clearly says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 159, anyone who breaks the religion into sects, Allah has nothing to do with him. You cannot divide the religion. Anyone who divides is in the wrong. You ask me, why are people killing each other? You have to, have to ask them. Suppose, as a teacher, you tell the people, don't copy, and yet they copy. Who's to blame, the teacher or the student? The student. Here, Almighty God has given a free will to the human beings that you can do what you want. I've given you guidance. The last and final guidance, the last and final revelation is the glorious Quran. The do's and do's is mentioned here. And Allah says, and I mentioned in my talk in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32, if anyone kills a human being, whether it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, whether it be Hindu, Jew, Christian, Sikh, anyone, unless it be for murder, or for spreading mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of human race. If he saves any human being, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. So God Almighty doesn't like people killing each other. But if human beings don't want to follow, who's to blame? The human beings. So this world, the Quran says in Surah Mulk, chapter 16, verse number 2, that this world, Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. Allah doesn't interfere. If he wants, he can. The Quran says if Allah wanted, he could have made all the people believe. But then where is the test? If the teacher wants, he can easily pass all those students irrespective of whether they fail. Teacher can, but that will be passed. Then where is the free will of the student? If they are undergoing a test and if someone doesn't give a right answer, yet the teacher passes, 
then a person who has studied hard will object that I slog so much for the examination, this person is copying and is cheating, he writes the wrong answer and you pass him. So next batch, if the people realize the teacher passes everyone irrespective whether you give right answer or wrong answer, then everyone will stop studying. Then you may get a degree, a medical degree. But that doctor when he passes his medical, when he comes out, he will not cure the people, he will kill the people. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the guidelines in the glorious Quran. Do not kill, do not harm others, love people, love your neighbors, all that is my talk. But if people don't do, that means they are not following the Quran. Let it be anyone. Let it be anyone, whether it be America, whether it be Pakistan, whether it be any country in the world. People may say, see just by calling yourself a Muslim name, Abdullah, or Zakir, or Muhammad, you don't get a ticket to Jannah. Just by saying that you are a Muslim, doesn't make you a Muslim. Muslim is not a label. That okay, if I say I'm Muslim, I'm Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just by calling a person Zakir, Abdullah, Muhammad, Shakir, these people, if they act, if they submit their will to Allah, then they are Muslims. By calling themselves Muslims, as the Quran says, there are some people who are lip service Muslims. So if people are killing, they are not following the guidance of the Quran. If they follow the guidance of the Quran, peace will prevail throughout the world. Hope that answers the question. So Zakir Bhai, if a Hindu follows the principles of Quran, which are very similar to the principles given in the various Hindu religious books. Can a Hindu call himself as a Muslim? Or on the other hand, can a Muslim call himself as a Hindu? Because you are, the very topic of your lecture is universal brotherhood. I properly understood Dr. Vax. When he asked his question. Very good question. Brother asked a very, if you ask a clear question, I can give a reply, Alhamdulillah. Brother asked a very good question. Can a Hindu following the principles of Islam in the Quran and Hinduism be called as a Muslim? And can a Muslim be called as a Hindu? Very good. Let's understand the definition of the word Muslim and a Hindu. As I said, Muslim is a person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. What is the definition of the word Hindu? Do you know? Hindu is a geographical definition. Anyone living in India, anyone living on this side of the Indus Valley civilization, he's a Hindu. By definition, I'm a Hindu. Do you know that? <laughs> Hindu is a geographical definition. You ask anyone, according to Swami Vivekananda, Hindu is a misnomer. Geographically, I'm an Indian, I'm a Hindu geographically. But Swami Vivekananda said that they should be called as Vedantists. They should not be called Hindus. Vedantis. So if you ask me, am I geographically Hindu? Yes, I am geographically Hindu. I am. But if you ask me, am I following the Vedas? I said that those parts of the Vedas which conciliate with the glorious Quran, I have got no objection following those parts. For example, that there is one God. But if you say I believe that Almighty God created the Brahmin from the head, a different caste, which are superior caste, the Kshatriyas from the chest, it's Veda I'm quoting. If you don't believe in the Veda, it's your problem, brother. But this is the Veda I'm quoting. You can ask the scholars of Vedic scholars, they are sitting here. They are sitting here. Vedas say that, not I. The Vaishyas from the thighs and the Sudras from the feet. So I don't agree with this concept. That's right. So if you ask me, do you believe in the philosophy of Veda? I say no. This particular philosophy. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Geographically said that. Yes. Brother rightly said that anyone who inhabits India has to be Hindu, but natural. Anyone living in America is a citizen of America. He has to be American. Very good. Alhamdulillah. So anyone living. Yes. That's it. I agree with you, brother. Geographically, everyone living in India is a Hindu. So I completely agree with it. By the geographical definition, if you say, if you say that anyone who lives in India is a Hindu, it's correct. Any scholar will agree, anyone living in India is a Hindu, geographically I'm a Hindu. But because I stay in India, can I be a Muslim? Yes. Of course. Can a Muslim be a Hindu? Yes. If the Muslim is living in India, he can be a Hindu. But if a so-called Hindu lives in America, he's not a Hindu. 
Do you know that? He's an American. So Hinduism cannot be called a universal religion, according to the scholars. Hindu is the religion of India only. It's not a religion, it's a geographical definition. According to Swami Vivekananda, who's a great scholar, he said Hinduism is a misnomer. You know misnomer? Misnomer means a wrong label given. They should be called as Vedantis. So if you ask me, am I a Hindu? I will tell you, if Hindu is a person living in India, by all means I'm a Hindu. But if you say Hindu is a person who worships, as the person said, you know, that if you believe in so-and-so gods, we have got forms, etc., and we have got heads and hands, etc., then I'm not a Hindu. But if you mean a geographical definition, yes, I'm a Hindu. Similarly, can a Hindu be a Muslim? Yes, a Indian can be a Muslim. A Hindu can be a Muslim. But if that Indian, if that Indian does idol worship, he can't be a Muslim. Because the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 48 and Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 116 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never forgives the sin of committing shirk, associating partners. Any other sin if he wishes, he may forgive. But shirk he'll never forgive. So an Indian living in India, geographical Hindu, can be a Muslim. But if that geographical Hindu, Indian, breaks any commandments, that is, the basics of concept of God, believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he cannot be a Muslim. Any Muslim who follows the Quran and lives in India, he is an Indian Muslim. Hope it's very clear for you. He is a Hindu Muslim. <laughs> Two things I want to make very clear. First, you might have, uh, might not have properly heard me. Uh, brother, uh, I think as far as the question answer session goes. We'll allow normally one question, you put your question completely as a question rather no. than lecture and let the speaker answer. After the question answer session is over, after the program is over and when others who might not be interested in discussion, we'll welcome discussion after the program so everyone else is not blocked up on one question and we give opportunities to many other people. We will allow. Yes, sir. Uh, Advocate Hegde. Question answer, wow. Debate holding. आपण जे करता है ते डिबेटच्या पद्धतीने करता है नंतर 